Dad on camera number two, mom on camera number one, and we are going to make dinner tonight. I'm going to make dinner for mom and dad and show you guys what I do in the kitchen and some of the hacks that I have come up with so that I don't lose any limbs and don't end up bleeding or burnt. That's mom's job. Stay tuned. So the first piece of key equipment in the kitchen is my wooden cutting board. It's big enough that it covers my entire lap. In my new wheelchair, I have a bit of a downward slope on the cutting board. So I will put a towel, kitchen towel, underneath there, levels it out. It's just a bigger surface so that I can collect everything from the fridge and bring it in here. I have a large fridge in the back that stores everything and a small one in the kitchen that keeps it tidy. making chorizo, Mexican roast veggies, with a Spanish chorizo sausage, and all the vegetables. People ask me what I eat. Basically protein and veggies as much as I can. I've had to start to eat binding agents those breads, things like that, so that it all sticks inside of me. Otherwise, the bowel routine can get thrown off. Peppers, onion. So, as you can see, my kitchen is pretty small. I've got one lower cabinet, one bank of drawers, one corner cabinet, and an open shelf, which holds pretty much everything. It's probably one of the things I like the best about this kitchen is it's small and I can reach everything from the sink. I can put my dishes away without having to move. Nice houses are great, small kitchens still kind of preferred. Um, so I don't have to wheel around the island to go and get from the fridge to the sink or stove or whatever. Large cutting board on my lap. Sharp knives. Key. Don't cut yourself with dull ones. If you don't have any knife skills, maybe you learn some. You'll have more fun in the kitchen. Listen to a podcast today that told me that, so that's cool. Um, also, this chair is not so bad because my feet are tucked underneath of myself, but I made sure to put shoes on to show you guys best practice in the kitchen. If you drop a knife and it goes point down, you want shoes on or slippers or socks or something. Uh, just don't lose a toe. You won't know if you lose a toe. Great tip. Alright, pro tips. Cheers. Drink wine, it makes making dinner better to my standards of healthy living. Um, I bought two knives right after my injury. A large chopping knife that I use for most everything and a small paring knife. And that's pretty much, I could, I could move into a van and be okay with the amount of stuff that I would need. So, sweet potato. Don't judge my cutting of vegetables, by the way. Doing this to show you my kitchen. I might even speed this up and not show anybody. 
I like how you put it on the flat side. Does it roll around? Yeah. Not just a pretty face. It took me years to figure that out. <laughs> uh, wheelchair, like physics. Physics plays a lot of role in this. So I have a garbage can outside of under the sink because that's a pain in the butt. I'll leave it open. It's a large one. Some have the automatic, which is cool, but I like this. It just stays there. This is the other tip that I love. I rest the cutting board on the edge and just dump it into the trash. Uh, when you're peeling veggies and stuff, I'll sit this right to my side and peel into the garbage can. It bounces off the lid. Lots less cleanup. I don't love cleaning the floors. Not like I used to. I leave the cutting board on my lap. I don't cut on the counter. I tried. This is how they teach you in rehab, is on the counter. I put it on my lap. There's much less opportunity to slip with a knife coming at your face when, you know, it doesn't have to be built accessible. All the people in my life are tall. It's still a normal kitchen counter height, but down here with this big surface, you know, my legs are still safe and I have the actual force of myself. So somebody that has limited hand function too, if you're using one of those boards where you're having to use your full force and you don't have necessarily the best balance and standing at a counter might be dangerous with a sharp knife, this is a good practice to do. Just grab a chair even and sit down and do this. Instead of trying to pick up a heavy cutting board and dump things and do this with it way out to the side, I don't know how to for that. I don't have a modified stove. I reach over hot burners all the time. I don't know what to tell you. Be careful. <laughs> all right. Here is the storage solutions for lower cabinets to create a little bit of space. I've put a wire shelving here that's got, you know, a second level. These don't always sit there, but putting things in containers when you can grab them out and see instead of having to dig through, but right, an old pot works also fine. That's what's going on in there. Olive oil, salt, and pepper is really it. Most of the time. Till mom and dad come for dinner and I have to get more creative. What kind of salt are you using? Himalayan pink rock salt. Because I was told by a quadriplegic, high level quadriplegic woman that I was roommates with and GF strong that there's a lot of healing properties to it. So that and sea salt are the only ones that I use and sea salt's just a recent thing again. Oh, could you show me where you put, got that from? Oh, my miraculous spice rack. Mm -hmm. I'm not somebody that likes stuff on my counter because I can't reach the back of it anymore. So this was my solution. Went to Ikea and bought a metal magnetic strip. These have a big magnet on the back. You can get them at, uh, in Canada, Canadian Tire or wherever, but they all stick on there and it doesn't take too much to get them off. 
if you had kids, probably not the best idea. That's the, that's my spice rack. You get to put whatever you want there. Works as art. Right, it matches everything else in the kitchen. I'm currently in the process of painting the cabinets and spray bombing them, so I'm missing one. And then this is the last one that will decide if we get artsy and leave it white or if it goes dark gray. So many people don't know that the stove has a lower drawer. The stove has a lower drawer. A roaster pan with a handle so that when it's full, it's not like a cookie sheet that wants to bend and I can pull it out of the oven and hang on to the thing. You gotta have strong hands, but if you do, this is another tip here. With oven mitts, of course. Well, yeah, and you gotta have like... Most oven mitts have a thumb, don't they? Just more protein in Brussels sprouts than a steak. I haven't done anything all day. I'm hungry. It smells delicious already. I don't sure. know what you're smelling. My vanilla candle. <laughs> Brussels sprouts are really good because they last a long time. So if you're somebody like me who travels a lot and isn't always home on the weekends. You stay a long time in the fridge. Can you so do you have a recipe that you follow or do you just add what you have? You're always welcome to Google whatever you want. I usually Google what I have in the fridge be like, hey, I've got this idea. Not very good with spices. So I usually have to go online and find whatever looks great. You can use any platform to find it on the internet. Nobody has an excuse not to be a good cook anymore. Self-education. <laughs> YouTube shows you everything. And if you don't have access to that, a very great chef friend of mine said, try it. If you think it's going to taste good, try it. What do you have to lose? Yeah, right. Why, why are you putting those in now? Kind of, oh, I put the root vegetables in first so that they get soft. So that we don't have mushy everything else and hard potatoes. When I bend over, I hang on to a push rim. I'm able to reach all the way to the ground, all the way over sideways. Your lap doesn't move. <laughs> Cheers. Do you want to show me that again? Please.
Excellent. Um, if you're falling over, reach for the ground. Stop yourself. You learn that. Especially when your mom was the first person to ever dump you out of a wheelchair accidentally. That's fine. Very shortly after I warned her it was going to happen. <laughs> it's okay. The only thing I'm choked about was when you went to the doctor and told them. And I specifically said, please, please don't tell the doctor because then I'll be under watch. <laughs> and they woke me up for the next three days. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Oh man, it was just a bump on my chin. <laughs> the bump on my chin. Yeah, just toppled straight forward out of the chair onto the sidewalk. Uh, lots of people to the rescue, but <laughs> just well, didn't know what happened. Ah. I knew you couldn't feel if you were hurt other Mom places. Was horrified. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Don't dump the broken, hopeless one on the ground. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. I think I dumped you in Victoria Avenue. Well, you, you always dump me in the snow, though. <laughs> it was up there. All I, re I usually remember you dumping me not on pavement. Yeah, it's kind of... I had to save that for mom. <laughs> but I've also... Oh, no, no, you took the glory right away. I was still in rehab when you did that one. Dad at least waited. It's all right. It comes with the amount of time you spend with somebody in a wheelchair. It's just a matter of time before you push them onto the ground at some point. We're all okay with it. It's really fine. Well, we're just hurt a little. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My feelings are hurt more than anything. <laughs> so, I don't, I'm not really here to give cooking advice, but. I like to crush the garlic before I put it in anything. Just feel like it lets some of the flavor out of it. Who knows? Again, why the fat knife? That amazing spice rock again. I'm jealous of that. Ty, you shouldn't be. You've grind kids now. <laughs> Your house would be wrecked with this. <laughs> Done. That's true. Do those have holes on the top to sprinkle? Yeah, it's got a hole or a thing. And then the whole top comes off if you take it off. But holes, straight hole, hole inside. It's gotta be good when the veggies smell good. This is another fantastic kitchen tool that I use for pretty much everything is rubber tongs. Um, pretty foolproof way of managing the situation.
interesting how you keep the door open like that. To hold the tray in. Maybe with the tongs you said too. Don't bother, <laughs> just push it with the door. I don't know if that's appropriate. Safer? Does it burn you? Yeah. And even when you're not chopping veggies, I use this cutting board to go on my lap for prep stuff also. So it just gives me a work surface that is at my level. Cut away from yourself, not like Ellen. Ellen cuts towards herself. That's why they give her a butter knife to open packages on television. I don't want a chorizo sausage, I want what's on the inside. So what did you just do there? Well, they come in like a membrane, right? Sausages come in a membrane, and I just want the ground chorizo. So that's all good stuff on the inside. So what do you do then? You, I just cut the sausage membrane. Which is like, you know how a sausage is made? It's like squeezed into a tube. So I'm just squeezing it out of the tube. You peel it back. Which, you could go and buy ground chorizo, but we're under times of quarantine, so when you have sausages and want ground chorizo, just break them apart. For those of you watching forever in the future, 2020 COVID-19 quarantine, weird. I'm saving one for breakfast. In proper sausage form. It's a great time to be creative. Sure, we're lazy. <laughs> People will probably be grossed out by that, but. So fun, girl. <laughs> Clean all the sausage and stuff out from under my fingers. Get back there. Uh, Show me how you wash your hands during COVID-19. <laughs> what, am I allowed to say it? You're supposed to jerk off your thumbs. <laughs> I have long nails. The water in my house is hot enough to burn your skin off. I should wash all the way up to my elbows basically, but I'm not going to. That's a little aggressive for like mid meal planning, but yes, mom. <laughs> How's it look? Like a bunch of veggies in a tray. delicious.
buttons. You're using your microwave as a timer. Yeah. For a little more. To be continued. Now, how long does this take to cook in the oven? Who knows? I've never done it before. All right. Just ask Google. Um, I like 45 minutes, I think, maybe closer to an hour. Depends on how high you cook it and how you like your vegetables done. Excellent. Let's see. I put the roast, the veggie, the root vegetables in, and I should have put it in with the onions. Supposedly says the recipe and garlic, but I didn't. Um, I put it in for 15 minutes before adding peppers and Brussels sprouts and onion and garlic. And then I added the chorizo sausage 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. 10 minutes ago, and it's basically cooked, so I'll keep it in there for a little while longer just to brown up veggies and we're good to go. Excellent. I'm not much of a chef, I just like all the good stuff, and really it's mixed meat and veggies that usually turns out okay. Easier to do meals in one dish, one dish meals. I am your typical bachelor and I try to do everything with the least amount of dishes that I possibly can. So I am usually trying to do it this way. Um, you know, I'll make a, I'll make a carb. I'll cook up a whole batch of rice that lasts three days, but any of the veggie stuff one pan, one pot, one or like one pan and a pot, not many dishes, no. But that's just because I don't have somebody else to do them for me. Do you have any tips for doing dishes? Uh, I don't know. Not really. I do dishes in really hot water. <laughs> you can't tell, but other than that, no, it's, uh, have a dishwasher. Put everything in there if you can. <laughs> This is why I have the least amount of dishes when I make meals, is because I do them all by hand. warms up my whole self because I run my hands into the hot water. So washing dishes, I just put one wheel up to the cabinet and freshly painted so you can't see the wheelchair scar that I normally can, but pull my butt forward in the seat sit right on the edge and that's where I do dishes. 
proper posture because I can support myself on the counter, so that works nicely. Slide my butt back. I've got my headband in accordingly. <laughs> just like Martha. Oh my gosh, if I got to hang out with Snoop Dogg just like Martha Stewart? <laughs> Cooking with Snoop Dogg and no. <laughs> Come on, I'd be in heaven, that'd be hilarious. That looks all right, okay? What do you think of the veggies? Should I maybe stick a fork in them? Stick a fork in them. No. No longer? No, I don't think so. Good. What do you put on a hash? I like sauce. Here. Well, Mama Come always here. said taste it first before you put anything on it. You might love it just the way it is. Mm. I always like sauce. <laughs> but and again, she was crazy. <laughs> Only near the end of life. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Did the whole booze sweep and what's what? Maybe mm. no. Just good help. Check it. Oh, hey, <laughs> this is made out of plumbing piping and plywood, is anchored into the wall more times than you could ever count. The whole house would fall down, this thing wouldn't, it's super wheelchair friendly. I run the chair into it constantly. It is a lifesaver. So if you are down cabinetry in anywhere in your home, plumbing pipe, from the hardware store. It'll make your hands black for a little bit if you get the designer y stuff. Uh, I love this shelf. It's great. If you were worried about cost, you could take it with you. But this one, there's 130 holes in the wall, so it's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, the flanges. Yeah. All the four screws per flange. And there are 15 flanges, 18, including the floor, but there's nothing in this one. Yeah. One screw each. It's probably all it needed. Are you coming to serve yourselves? Absolutely. Beautiful. I will be the first one. Looks absolutely amazing. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers. Thanks, Amy. Awesome. Accessible Kitchen 101. Throw tips for friends.